Yeah. Are you ready? Should I hit record now? Are you ready to rumble? I actually hit record already. <gasps> Go! Buenos dias. Hello. How you doing? Muy bien. This is my smile. They say doing this is good exercise for you. Look. Full bottle of water. Ooh. Every time he does that, I'm going to be like, ooh. Today is Wednesday morning for you. And... Tuesday night for us. Y'all. So with that being said, that means when you're watching this video tonight, we go live. 7 p.m. Cali time, Bible study. Yep, we so, had our meeting today, which was yesterday for you guys. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of late. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, it was a good meeting. Yeah. More water. Good. What? So, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> I don't know. Why? This video started off very awkward. I know, because you're weird. You're awkward. Whoa. Oh, oh my God. That was weird. Yeah, blurry. It went like this. I know. It went like that. Yeah. So, Did you um, guys see that? Yeah. It was. It was like Matrix style. So, we pre-record these videos, even though we release them as a premiere at 3 in the morning our time, 6 in the morning East Coast. So, a lot of times people comment and watch it live and they're like, how can we not respond yet? Because they're pre-recorded. So, um, the only way for me to pre-record it and have it release a different time is by setting it as a premiere. So, that's why I do that. But... Our Sunday services and our Wednesday Bible study are live. Like, we see your comments. Obviously, I can't see your comments if I'm the one preaching. But uh, for Sometimes I get to see them, but I can't, I can't comment back to them. I'll mm -hmm. see them, but I can't comment back to them because the thing is above me. So I can't like to yeah, be weird. doing all that, yeah. Or the whole row behind you and sees you. Yeah, everybody sees me behind, but I'm I'm like reading them and stuff, and I'm yeah. like, oh man, I can't really respond to them. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. hard. So, with that being said, oh, <laughs> that was loud. I know because of water. I know. <clears throat> with that being said. I want to talk about something simple, but important. One of those verses that we kind of skim over and don't see the importance of it. You know, and it's in the book of Acts. Ooh, Acts. In the book of Acts. In the libro de Acts. All right, don't laugh at my glasses, okay, guys? Because these glasses are from like 10 years ago. I found some glasses that I can actually... Uh. I know I look like a nerd, right? Okay. But anyways. We are good. in the book of Acts, <laughs> chapter 8, starting at verse 26. Hold your caballos. The book of Acts is basically the sequel to the Gospels. So you have the story of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then you have Acts. So that is basically part two. And um, it's a book about what happened with the church once Jesus resurrected and ascended up to heaven. So it's the Acts. What? Acts 8? Yeah, Acts 8, verse uh, 26. Acts 8, verse 26. So this is telling a story about one of the followers of Jesus. His name was Philip. Okay. And if we just read through, you won't even catch what it is that for me jumps jumps out, you know. So I'm just gonna read it. 
It says, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? So there's something in that. And you're like, well, that's cool. It's a cool little story that Philip was there and he saw this guy, and you know, right? Do mm-hmm. you want to read it in that? Yeah. It says, later God's angel spoke to Philip. At noon today, I want you to walk over to that desolate road that goes from Jerusalem down to Gaza. He got up and went. He met an Ethiopian eunuch coming down the road. The eunuch had been on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and was returning to Ethiopia, where he was minister in charge of all the finances of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. He was riding in a chariot and reading the prophet Isaiah. Keep Keep going. going. The spirit told Philip, climb into the chariot. Running up alongside, Philip heard the eunuch reading Isaiah and asked, do you understand what you're reading? Okay. This is the part that you just kind of, if you just read it, you don't pay attention. Is Philip was led by the Holy Spirit, number one. If you read the very first part, it says, An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and said, So this angel shows up to Philip literally and gives him directions which way to go. Okay. This is an angel of the Lord. So he's like, Okay. So what does that tell us? It tells us that sometimes angels can give us direction. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's not even the part I, I, I'm saying. But then, so he goes, he follows the directions, right? And, uh, did it get blurry? There it goes. He follows the directions, it says he arose and went, and then he sees this guy, this eunuch, right? For this Ethiopian man in a chariot. And then in verse 29, it says, Then the Spirit said, at first it was an angel of the Lord, said, Here, go there, go here, go here. It says, Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake that chariot. Okay? And then it says, So Philip ran to him. Why does this stand out? Can you guess why? I will tell you why. Philip was so in tune. And he was a servant, a true servant of God. He had surrendered to God to the point that the moment the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go that way, Philip didn't question it. Philip didn't doubt it. Philip didn't say, why, God? Why do you want me to go there? What's really over there? What? It says that the moment the Spirit told him, go and overtake that chariot, Philip ran. Why is that important? Because this is something that is lacking in the church today. Everyone wants an explanation. It's funny, right? Because we kind of laugh and joke, and I'm not trying to pick on... For, I'm going to pick on Abraham, but he's, he's a good kid, amazing kid, right? This, Who's Abraham? Your son. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, okay. my 16 going on 17 years old. Oh, he's 17 now. Yeah, this kid, if you give him a problem or something broken, he will figure out how to fix it. He's amazing. So Amazing. I, you know, but our kids have flaws, mm-hmm. right? So here's, here's one of the flaws. Uh, Abraham, come here. I need you to... Pick that up and put it there. Why? <laughs> what do you mean, why? I just told you to pick it up and put it over there. Yeah, but why? What is that going to do? What? <laughs> you know, that's what he does, right? Mm-hmm. That's what he does. That's what many of us do. How can, how can God operate the kingdom of God here on this earth? And if we're in a day and age where we want to know everything. We question everything. You know, if, if this is modern day and we're Philip walking through and all of a sudden it's not a chariot, but some guy that's passing by at a gas station and you're just minding your own business and the spirit says, go and stop them before they leave and you just take off and run, you're going to be like, uh, God, that's kind of awkward. Why do you want me to talk to him? What if he leaves? Why do you want me to tell him? I don't know what to do. And, and you just start self-doubting, questioning, this and that. 
And this is what's lacking because the book of Acts is the first church. So it gives us an establishment of, of what it should be like. Yeah. And Philip heard the word of the Spirit and immediately, it doesn't say he walked or sauntered over. It says he ran. Mm, that's good. You know, and, and that's why I say a lot of times, guys, um, things are simple. It, everything, not every scripture has to be super, super deep in order for it to be deep. Because this is deep without being deep. Is can we just begin to not question God and just do what he says? Because I believe that he knows better than you or I. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and like, like it's funny, the other day, um, we, we drive a certain way every time the same exact way. And she goes, I mean, she, you, <laughs> you go, why'd you go this way? You know, we always go the other way. And I think I, I just shrugged my shoulders. I don't know. I'm just tired of going that way. But honestly, I just felt led to go that way. Yeah. And that's what I told you. I said, did you feel led to go this way? And you said, you're all like, yeah, I guess. You know? And, and I was like, oh, okay. Because, and people that are just hearing this, our videos for the first time, you're like, what are you talking about, David? If you go back and hear our series a couple of weeks ago about hearing the voice of God, to the point where you get to know his voice so much that it's just there you know it's just there and like when i first started preaching i literally had to almost write out my whole sermon or have all these footnotes and all these outlines and all this and that and it's like now i'm just like lord i don't want to preach like that 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 i'll burn out you want me to preach for the rest of my life and write these outlines and this no i don't want to do that you know, I said, God, how about a better thing? How about if I learn to hear your voice and the moment you speak it, I just preach it? How about that, Lord? Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't take responsibility off of me because he ain't going to tell me something unless I know it. I got to know it because the Bible says the Holy Spirit brings you into remembrance. He will bring you into remembrance of what to say. How can I remember something unless I had first learned it? Whoa. What? So... I say all that to say this, is that let's, um, let's stop questioning God and just believe that he knows better. Yeah, take heed. We got to take heed. Yeah, you know, and, and trust that he knows better. Yeah, I agree. So have, have you ever been in a situation where you felt like God told you to do something and you questioned it? I have. Many times. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, so many times. But there's also many times that I have not taken heed and then later on suffer the repercussions of not doing what I should have done. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my God. I should have I should have listened or I should have went that way or I should have done this because I didn't pay attention or I didn't listen, you know, and I kick myself in the behind and I'm just like, what was I thinking? Why didn't I pay attention? You know, and sometimes I think that's when we realize that it was God's voice that was speaking to us, you know, and sometimes we, we don't listen, we're hard headed. But I love those moments when um, when God just does confirm and you see uh, the, affirm the, the, affirm the affirming moments where it's confirmation from someone where something does, you do take heed when God speaks to you and you use that discernment and you go and you're led and, and all of a sudden something does come to pass you know and it's such a beautiful mm -hmm. moment because it's like oh my god you know lord you you led me this way or i was supposed to go speak to this person and and look at the look at the outcome from it yeah and it's it's exactly the way it was supposed to happen for mm -hmm. his glory for his purpose 
And sometimes we don't even realize the way it's supposed to happen, but it just happens. And he makes a way. I remember um, when I first... House of Rest had maybe existed for a year. Mm-hmm. And I was at Ross, right there in McHenry. And I was just kind of... I forgot what I was looking for. Probably ties or something. Because mm-hmm. I always... like. They used to carry real expensive ties, but for cheap or something like that. Anyways, I saw this couple, and it was impressed on me like the Lord wouldn't leave me alone and said, go and talk to them. Go and talk to them. The whole time, it was like, I couldn't even look at the ties or whatever it was. I'm pretty sure it was for ties, because at that time, nothing in Ross fit me. <laughs> they did not carry my size at that time, mm-hmm. but I remember I liked the ties, and I... I I felt so prompted to talk to this couple. And um, I didn't do it. I didn't do it, and they left. And I remember getting in the car that same day. It was crazy. That same day, I got in the car, and I'm just like, Lord, I'm so sorry I let you down. I'm so sorry, God. I'm so sorry. You know, I, I don't know why you wanted me to talk to them, but I'm sorry I dropped the ball. I said, but please, please. Let me see them again. And I promise you, Lord, I will speak to them. And I went all the way across town in Modesto. And Modesto is about 300,000 people. It's pretty big. It's a sizable, you know, city. It's a town. It's a giant town. It's not a city. And um, I was in this residential area. And I wanted an icy. I don't know if you guys, they had those slush puppies. I grew up on slush puppies. Oh, those are the best. Yeah, the ice, mm. what are they called? Ices or No, 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 no ices. slushies. So yeah, slushy. Yeah, has slushies. that little dog with the beanie. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember growing up on those and I hardly see them. And it was this little tiny corner liquor store market in mm-hmm. some residential neighborhood, like, you know, like way on Coffee Road and just weird. I pull up there and that couple was there. Hmm. I mean, McHenry, you know where, where, where um, Guitar Center is? Yeah. That yeah, Ross. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, I see the same couple walk in. I could not believe it. I'm like, thank you, Lord. And I made a beeline for them. Yeah. And I said, hey, guys, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't want, I mean to freak you out or nothing. I said, um, my name is David. I pastor a small church here. But um, I saw you at Ross. You were just at Ross. And they're like, yeah, we were at Ross. And I said, and the Lord just told me, to talk to you and tell you that he loves you guys, that he loves you and whatever's going on in your life, that, that he he's calling out for you. And the couple used to serve God. There you go. You know, I gave them a flight to the church. They never came, but that wasn't even important. What was important was that God gave me a second chance. But there's so many times that I didn't get a second chance. And if I could have just been like Philip, and the moment I heard, don't question, don't nothing, just do it. Imagine, imagine how many Christians there are in our nation. And if each one of us, let's say once a week, gets prompted to speak to somebody and we don't do it. Exactly. That's a million people or so, who knows the number, that would have got saved, would have been touched, would have gotten healed, would have gotten delivered. Yes. And we didn't do it. And that's why, that's why, you know, for the last few days, I've been saying it's so important that you just reach out. You know, I used to waitress, you know, um, for, for 12 years. Remember, I told mm-hmm. you that that was one of the that's one of the way one of the ways that I raised my children was waitressing. And I would waitress from 10 to 6 in the morning for a really long time. Uh, yes, I was a Denny's girl. Um, and I used to work the counters and I remember there was a man that came in and he looked so sad, you know, just like very dry, sad face. And I've always been a very charismatic, very social, you know, the way I am, babe, you know, I'm always like, you know, they'd come up to my counter and I'd, and he just had a dry face, you know, and I, and I was like, Hey, like this. Yeah, just like, you know, and I'd be like, hey. No, hey, you're hitting the counter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, I go, you got a smile on my counter, you know? No sad face on my counter. What can I get for you today? And 
he just kind of looked at me kind of a little bothered but I, and I'd be like no no sad face what can I get for you you know and he just looked at me like confused but the thing is is that I engaged with him and he just looked at me like are you seriously taking time on me and he just he kept looking at me with his weirdest face and confused but the fact is that I did not give up on him I smiled and I kept it real with him throughout the whole conversation took his order and everything I will tell you this that a week and a half passed and he came back in with a card and do you remember I told you mm -hmm. that he came back in with a card and it had $150 in there and it was the most beautiful tip. And he wrote in that card that that week before he was ready to go commit suicide because he had lost everything. Wow. And, and that made a big difference. My smile... And my service unto him and the fact that I spoke to him that day made a difference in his life. He was ready. That was his last meal that that's day. That's crazy. And that's why I say that it takes, it, it can be you that can change somebody's life. And sometimes we don't realize it. So our smile and our God bless you. And you know what? Smile today or just telling somebody something makes a big difference in the manner that we say it in the demeanor that we bring it just anything just being able to sit with somebody and just be like hey what's going on today yeah what do you want to so yeah i mean i, I love that portion of, did you ever catch that that he ran that no no yeah. I was more into the 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 fact about the reading part, you know, oh. for some reason I was like, okay, what, you know, that that's kind of like what I thought you were going to bring up it. Oh, well, tell him. Stop it. Ah, woo. Tell him to stop it, you guys. So I, I just, I want us like, you know, what, what did we talk about today? And that's kind of, I don't know why. That's the, actually really beautiful, though. Yeah, I it love jumped that. at me, the yeah. fact that, that, that he ran. And I'm just like, so my prayer is this. I'm like, Lord, let me be like Philip. Yeah. Let, 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 me, awesome. let me receive something from you and let me not question. Because I think our, our humanity always wants to question everything. And I'm like, Lord, I don't, I don't want to do that. Because then if I question you, then it means I don't trust you. And I want to trust you. So, Lord, let me be like Philip and run the direction you tell me to run. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a prayer that even today, even as, as a pastor or whatever, I still pray that. I'm like, Lord, let me be like Philip. Yeah. That's a beautiful, a beautiful heart that he's just like, man, Lord, you tell me which way to go and I'm going to go. You know, and I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to do it yeah. because I trust you. That What a beautiful way to show our God that we trust him. Yeah. What a, you know, you know, how, you know, I remember my kids, you know, they'd be on the edge of the bed and I'll tell them to jump to me. And I, it felt so good that they trusted because they knew. I told them, I'm not going to let you fall. You know, and they would run across the bed and jump in the air. And I always caught them and they trusted me. So how much more can you imagine how much it pleases our father in heaven when we trust him? It reminds me of when I was always in the car with the kids and when my ki when my kids were little, they don't do that to me no more. But, you know, they would always tell each other, huh, mom's always right. Mommy, you're always right. Huh, mommy, you're always right. And they would tell each other no, that. Now they say the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but the thing is, is that my older one would be like, stop it, okay? Mom's right. And then my little ones would tell the other ones, mom's always, huh, mommy, you're always right. Mom's always right. And they would tell each other that I have four kids. So they would tell each other that. How'd that feel? Because the fact is, is that they trusted me. They trusted me so much. And you know what? Even still to this day, you see my daughter calls me every mm -hmm. day. No matter, because she lives in Southern California. 
And my baby girl calls me every day. Just about. <laughs> every day and like I don't know how many times a day when she's going through stuff and she'll just because she still trusts me. And I love it because I wouldn't have it any other way and I don't think she would either because she trusts her mom's judgment. And it's the same thing with, you know, my kids. I love that my kids trust my judgment. And I think the other day too, I mean, I think your son said something so wonderful the other day that just made you feel like it floored me. It yeah, it did floor you because you just kind of felt like you're all like I I trust you, Dad, you know, and and you were just like Well it was, it was a chance for him to make a huge investment in his future. And I just kind of brought it to him, told him about it. And and he he did it. He he's did like, it and he's like, "Oh, well, if if you say that it's good, I'm just gonna do it because yeah. you're saying that it's. He was my dad, so I didn't. I know he's not gonna leave me wrong. He said something like that. Yeah. And, and that just floored me to know that that I have that much influence, and it felt good, you know. And and why do we say this? We're not trying to pat ourselves in the back, but I'm just saying, if I felt good, how does that make our Father in Heaven feel? Yeah. You know. I, I, it's got to be amazing for him to say, David, I want you to go here. And then I just run. How does that make him feel? I bet you he taps the angels. Hey, look, look at my son. Look at my son. Look at my girl. Look at my daughter. Look at her. And you, and you yeah. guys got to remember, you know, you got to remember you're talking to, you're, you're, you're listening to two parents who, one, we, we haven't done everything right. You got a mom who was a mom at 14 years old, who's been on her own since she was 15 and has gone through a lot of abuse, gone through all kinds of crazy things. And then you have an, a dad who has gone through prison and has gone through all kinds of crazy stuff too, you know, gang life and everything. And then we have these amazing kids, you know, we really do, mm -hmm. doing things that we've never had a chance to do yeah. yeah making these amazing decisions like my little girl was in new york a few months ago that's crazy I've and my son been. in armenia and then yeah. you know my daughter traveling my daughter just went to utah and she's over there hiking and you know our kids are doing things that we've never had a chance to do yeah. and we're just like you know they're traveling they're they're you know getting all these degrees and going mm -hmm. to college and everything and we're just like Man, that it feels really good to see our children accomplish yeah. and, and yeah. for us to be able to hear that they trust us and for them to feel that way. That's yeah. and, and how is this relevant? How is our, you know, we're not trying to babble on about ourselves. No. But it's relevant. It's completely relevant because the Lord is pleased when we trust him when we follow him and we run to him and we run to him <laughs> you know and i truly believe that he brags about us he brags about you the smallest thing you do you know and don't think no don't think no how many of you had a baby that the that baby turned around on its back and you guys make a big oh my god the baby turned around and you make this big old deal out of it that's the smallest gesture right so what makes you think that the smallest gesture you do towards God doesn't please him? And oh he says, look God. at my son and look at my daughter. Look at them. Yes, go, go, do it. You think not? Come on. Yes. So I think that's it, right? He's excited. He's excited about every accomplishment, every achievement, every endeavor that you're, that you're succeeding towards. Everything that you're doing, he, he's excited. Yeah, I mean, and we don't do things to please him because that's religion is, well, let's please him so he'll love us. We're not trying to, mm. we don't do things for his love. He loves you already. Regardless. But there's a difference from pleasing him. I love my kids no matter what, but there's mm. things they do that just please me. Yeah. It just, it just hits me. And, and that's what I'm saying. You can't gain his love because you've already gained his love. Yeah. But let's live a life that pleases yeah. him. Don't forget he chose you. Yeah, but let's live a life that pleases him. Yeah. Yeah. Don't take advantage. Be like, oh, he loves me. And then just do your own thing. 
No, he loves me, so he loves me, so I want to please him. Yeah. So. Amen. All right, guys. All right, guys. Tonight, Bible study. Yes. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Cali time. That's it. California. I didn't finish my bottle this time. Almost. Let me see. Yeah, his tummy, his tummy was making rumbling noises. Yeah. I'm sure you guys but, heard it. Man, I serve Jesus. <laughs> serve Jesus to the core. <laughs> okay. All Bye, right, guys. guys. Bye. See you later.